This is the Podcast Inc. production. Booyah! Is the moment podcasting fans listening around the world have been waiting for. Coming to you not so live from a listening device of your choice. It's time! Podcasting out of this corner, a mixed martial talker, holding no professional record. He stands at six feet one and one half inches tall, weighing in at whatever he feels like, hailing out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, presenting the sometimes angry, always funny, Self-proclaimed podcasting champion of the world, Steve Fingerstyles. So, welcome to another rendition of the podcast. I am here once again, always again, and joined by a trio of returning guests and fellow pork chops. First up. He is the man behind the hilarious comedy Portuguese accounts on your favorite social media platforms, Bay Fate. What's going uh, on, my friend? How are you? Not, not bad, man. Can't complain. Can't All right. Complain. And like I said, that's only one. The second gentleman <laughs> joining us. He does his thing over at the Poison Rana feed and post wrestling feed, Mr. Braden Harrington. Hello. Wow, it's great to to be back here on the podcast it's been a been a while steve it's been a while since i've seen you you owe me a you owe me a sesh i know we keep saying we're gonna hook up but every, you, you know what's funny every time you end up texting me or vice versa i'm always in the dirty schwa visiting my in-laws it's it's hilarious oh, that's unfortunate, <laughs> that's, unfortunate. <laughs> that's hilarious and lastly but certainly not least the final guest joining us you could catch him on cooking his favorite Portuguese dishes for all of us, dropping those C words, dropping those P words, all those favorite words that the Shatas hate. Dave Rodriguez. What's up, guys? Bon dia, as, as I usually say. Uh, what's going on? What's up, gentlemen? And you know what? I know, Braden, you came up with this name, but it's officially going to be anointed here. We will be known forward as the Flying Pork Chops. Right. <laughs> pork chops. I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay with that. Uh, right? Pork like chops. It. We like wrestling. Pork yeah. chops. Exactly. Yeah, like chops. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> right, right. And we're going to get into all this fine wrestling because the elementary shaper just happened. By the time this drops, Raw already was aired. But we don't care about that. We're going to talk elimination shaper, what we've got, what you guys have been doing over the past few months. Because it has been a while for all of us, literally ho- hooking up individually, together, whatever. doesn't matter. But I'll start off with you, Ben. How's been things going How's been the account over at Comedy Portuguese? What's going on, my friend? Uh, same old, man. I just I try and post something at least every day. That's when if I don't post, it's because I'm just busy with life. But I try and post something positive every day, something that makes everyone laugh. And I'm just yeah, it's still fun to do. Uh, I still enjoy making people laugh. I I love uh, I love seeing David's success and how far he's come, and and just he's. He just he puts in the work, and it's it's great to see him and other people putting in the work in the Portuguese community, and just and just you know taking off. It's it's awesome to see, man. No, it's so true. Like this little Portuguese community that's like on social media that comes from all different aspects. Like look at all, all of us. I uh, mind you, maybe myself and Brady are a little bit closer because we both podcast. But used to guys, one cooks, one does comedy. Like you know what I mean? There's so much avenues now that the Portuguese people are doing. And I've had Dean Kamara on. He's the videographer. Does UFC? Does uh, uh, NFL videos and stuff? And it's like to see the Portuguese community thrive and also coming together and supporting each other. That's a fantastic thing. Because that's a big difference. I know maybe yeah. yourself, Braden and Ben. It's different here in Toronto because you know the mentality in Toronto. It's eat or be eaten so you, you like you know what i mean it's hard to get like that help and that push behind you but outside it's oh it's so amazing 
it's just like I'm I'm a firm firm believer, man. Just like pay it forward and like you know, like I had in the beginning, I had people like repost my stuff and and they had a bigger following than I did, and it helped me take off. So like you know, when people ask for advice or hey, what do you think of this and that, like I just I try. Somebody needs a logo even because I'm a graphic designer. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's a logo. Like, he designed my first logo ever. Yeah. When I, when oh I first shit. Started out. When That's I first true. started out, I reached out to him for like, hey, what do you think I should do the type of stuff? And he's yeah. like, hey, you need a logo. And I'm like, all right. And he made me yeah. one or whatever. So what he's saying is true. Like, literally, I, I came to him first. Yeah, that's no, and like that's just it. Like, yeah, like, I, and that's why I'm so happy to see he's, he's succeeding and doing so well. Because it's like it's never about for me. It's not about like oh, like competition. I'm just doing this exactly. Fun. And I would argue that like, yeah, I do comedy and Dave does cooking, but Dave's also doing comedy too. And that's yeah, part of course. Of the allure of what he does, like he, you know, he, he drops some curse words while he's while he's cooking. It's like okay, all right. Yeah. It's uh, funny because uh, like there's uh, like <laughs> there's like certain. Uh, avenues of humor that might work like for the different people or whatever so like i think steve you might have hit me up the other day with like hey like you should do something on this or sometimes like all yeah, the dark I, I and the portuguese you, kids I you a, yeah i sent you a song i'm like oh you should totally like right come out that's what was, yeah well, sometimes well, i'll, I'll well. have Derek and i'm like hey like this is really funny but i can't do it justice like maybe you guys do it or ah, vice versa like right so like a lot of times like 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 we like we were in the same avenue, but we instead of like competing with each other, we just bounce off each other. It makes it so much more pleasant. Well, and that's you know? the thing. And there's there's enough for everyone to eat at the table, so to speak, because obviously we're going to be talking about the head at the table probably soon enough. But <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's enough. So why? Like, I, I don't understand these people who like the gatekeepers of the of the world and people who still, yeah, it still oh, exists. Yeah, I know. And, and to me, it's yeah, like I, I can't wait till they're gone. Done. When it gets when, just, when when you come to my turn, I'm gonna let. Uh, Steve finish, but when I get to my turn, I'm gonna tell you guys a, a really funny story. You're gonna like. I again, I just I don't even. I'm at the point like I don't even look at it that way. Like whatever opportunities come along, I'm grateful. I take them, but I just kind of do my thing. If I see an opportunity to help somebody else, or like a David said, if I oh this 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 idea might work for David, like yeah, absolutely, right. Or even to, like for your podcast, I'd be like, oh, here, this might be a good topic or something. Yeah, like, exactly. You, know, you just, you just want to see everyone doing good, everyone succeeding at what they're doing and what they enjoy doing, and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty well, that's the thing. And not to put you on the spot now, but you know now you got to create the logo for the FPC, the Flying Pork Chops, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Or or is it a giant, giant rooster? rooster? I know, a giant rooster, right? The group finisher can be the 4P. Oh, God. I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm the uh, Sami Zayn of the uh, Pork Chops. I feel Actually, like I'm you, the R-Truth you, of the Judgment Day, yes. the Owen Hart of the Nation of Domination. You know what I always say, and I always have a conversation with my wife, I feel like I'm the CM Punk of the Portuguese community. Like, oh, God. The, old, the old guard fucking hates me. Like yeah. The people my age really like me. I only do it because I love it. I'm not really doing it for anything else. <laughs> And I have tattoos and shit, and I kind of just speak my mind. Like, so a lot of times, like, a lot of times you'll see, like, I'll, I'll put his theme music on my posts and stuff, because I yeah, just yeah. feel like, and I'm not a big CM Punk fan, but, like, I sometimes, like, like make the comparison, and I'm like, yeah, screw these people, man. Like, you know, like, but, the people that give me shit, whatever. And I, that I kind of, like, think about him, and I'm like, man, like, he doesn't, he, he, he made his bag already. He doesn't have to do this stuff. Like, that's he does it because he likes it, whether we like him or not, and he kind of does his own thing and, and whatever. And, I, and I, it's funny you say you're the Sami Zayn. I'm always like kind of making those parallels <laughs> of like, who is this person in the wrestling world? You know? That's hilarious. And to be fair, you haven't torn a tri- tricep yet cooking, so you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to grab the, the tongs in your yeah. hands. Just, oh. oh, shit. <laughs> That's too funny. Too funny. I'm not, I'm not as old as him yet. So I that would be that. funny cooking with like an arm sling just for the hell of it. <laughs> so there was a, I, I hate to keep like, I have stories about everything. There was a period of time where yeah. I, I painted my bedroom and I lost feeling in my hand for like three weeks. Oh, shit. And if you look at those specific videos that I filmed during that time and I'm trying to hold cheese while I'm cutting it, <laughs> my fingers are like jello. And I'm like, like you, I didn't say anything, but I can tell which ones my hands were numb in. And, and, yeah, oh, that's too that. funny. <laughs> so there are good injuries. <laughs> True worker, working, work, working to the yeah, end. Right. <laughs> right? Oh my god, keep selling it, my friend. Well, Braden, how about you? I know you're doing big stuff too with the Poison Rana guys. You're also you're doing uh, wrestling karaoke again coming up soon for a dynamite event. Let's speak I, on it, my friend. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had a I had a good year. Like wrestling has been super hot right now, and uh, I've been covering it for a long time. I work for like different radio stations and TV stations. I still do uh, different different gigs and stuff, but. Uh, over the past year and some change, maybe two years since the pandemic, we've been doing like wrestling parties and watch parties and yep. building communities. I, I'm, I'm downtown Toronto where I live. So 
since the past two years, we've been doing like watch pay-per-view parties and wrestling karaoke parties and, and all sorts. And like right now I'm planning and plotting for money in the bank weekend. They're coming here in June. And like, I got some fucking things up my sleeve for sure. So I'm, I'm almost becoming like a, like an event coordinator because I've done it for all in for Wembley. We did an event before and after just near the venue and in New York as well. So um, yeah, I, I like wrestling right now is really popular and that's something I've always, always loved and, and trying to make like communities and, and, and avenues and stuff like that because people want it. People need uh, things and, and content and need yep. people to watch wrestling with and talk about it with and everything. And I've noticed that in multiple big cities around the world. So it's, it's kind of coming back in full force and it kind of died off for a little bit there. It seemed there wasn't much. Yep interest but right now it's like full steam like everyone wants to get back into it so i thought it would be a good time to kind of capitalize that and necessarily like i i you know i make some money doing this but it's just become like a a, a passion project like going i'm going i'm going to wrestlemania i'm trying to uh, do some events for that as well so like yeah uh we've been we've been kind of going balls to the wall with like different events and just creating communities and and you know nerdy wrestling fans who don't necessarily might have friends or, or, you know, people who watch this stuff with. And exactly. I, I, we, we did a, we did a rumble party just a few weeks ago and this guy came up to me. I swear okay. the guy was like almost in tears and he what? goes, man, I, I watch wrestling alone a lot. And this was the first time in 10 years that I've watched it with other people. Oh, I'm like, what the f-? I'm that's, like, what do you bro, mean, that's so bro? true, man. That, that's like, I, I feel that so hard. I, I was going to yeah. say to you, like, it's so rare to find somebody to talk to us, talk about wrestling with or watch that. Like, yeah. I'll just listen to wrestling podcasts all day just to hear other people talk <laughs> right. about it because I don't get to do it. Sometimes I listen to your show and stuff too. Like, I just want to fill that space because I don't get to do it myself. So, I'm like, that is so true, man. Like, if I had events around here, I would totally go, man. Yeah. I, I kind of want to go to one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah, I do have to come down. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna. Yeah, I didn't even realize you did that much stuff. Uh, I'm more so into cool. the wrestling karaoke. I just did karaoke last night. I know. Oh, so cool. oh, oh I can tell really you. Cool. It's my wife's birthday, so I was belting out. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm still have a voice. I still. What'd you sing? I love karaoke a lot. Oh, he's a karaoke I king, did. man. I did Frank Sinatra my way. Oh shit. <laughs> The end of the night, I did Bohemian Rhapsody. I got brave. <laughs> oh, what? Look at this guy. Look at you this. You could have done. You could have done the the Superior My Way, which is Limp Biscuit My Way. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I could pull that one off. And fucking <laughs> that's and, and I could contest. Like I've been to a few of, of your gatherings, Brady, and it, it's a good time. Like if people think that you're gonna go, because for me it's hard. I don't mind like the small venues nowadays because you know those are the hardcore fans. Like you know you're not gonna get the shitty chance. You know you're not gonna get that guy who's gonna try and steal the show. But when you go to the big events, I hate to say it, you get the shitty fans that are in attendance. And those shitty fans don't go to these events. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like-minded people. It's people who want to have a good time. No one's going to shit on you. You're not going to be shamed. You can literally go up there, sing whatever wrestling tune you want, and everyone's going to be go crazy about it. We, yeah. We've done them a few times, and some people have sang, like, obviously, the cult of personality. Always, of course. Always sang and requested, like, right away. But sometimes people put weird ones in, like, Ass Man would request it. And <laughs> a, guy, a guy straight up killed it, so I got to give him credit to that. Uh, someone did American Males, if you know what that one is. Oh, yes, Buff Bagwell, and what's his oh, name? Yeah, 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 yeah. and Scotty Riggs. American <laughs> Males, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. we, we've talked before on, on a show... The, the three of us uh, about how the, the the Portuguese community is not well represented in the world of professional wrestling. No, it's not. And I, I mean, wait, I got, did you guys did you guys see who follows my page? By the way, yes, <laughs> Killer Kelly. Yes. Oh my god, our we're, one, like, we're yeah. like friends now. Man. Our one I'm representative, like, like, dream come true, man. Oh like, my what god, a, what a rep. She, she, I like. She fought, like friended me or whatever. Like we talked a few times. I thought nothing of it. Like whatever. She's being nice. But she'll occasionally like DM me about stuff, and I'm like, "We're friends, man. This is she's cool." Sliding in your DMs. She's a very nice, very nice lady. But like, uh, she'll you know she'll just like I don't know. She, like we live in, kind of near each other too, so something you know she'll see something in my stories or whatever, and just like talk about it. But uh, I'm still trying to get her to come over for dinner. But that is our representation right now. It that's is, kind of it, right? That's awesome. Yeah. That's and that. that she, not, the cut, not to cut David off, but that's another great uh, thing about like what I think all of us do. Just the the people we come in contact with and the relationships that you, yes. you would have yeah. never thought that you would, you would see just by doing this stuff. Like just, it's, it's great. It's so awesome. 
I want to film a video with her so bad. Like, like I want her to come to my house and I'll feed her and like we just do a video. It'll feed her. Like, chokes me out or something. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly something where my mind is. Yeah. Like she's gotta, she's gotta be like, yeah. I did go to wrestling school. Yeah. If you guys remember from our last conversation, yeah. so I could work, man. I'll, 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 I'll drop, I'll take a bump right here, man, on the tile. Nice. But uh, <laughs> no, no, I, yes, gimmick. Come that's in, a, that's man. our only, uh, that's our only representation right now. At least she's really tough, so it's a good representation. You know? I, I, I came prepared though because I saw a post the other day, mm. and I think it's well fitting that I read it here on this show. Okay. You're all familiar with uh, wrestling superstar. Uh, just incredible. Of course. Yes. The original right? Portuguese man of war. Yeah. Okay. Well, just the other day, yeah. he posted a photo okay. of him wearing the man of war mask. Yeah. And yeah. I quote, yo, I found this one Aldo mask. Anyone want to buy it? Let me know. DM. Yo, yo I, I might want that. I yeah. might, how long ago was that? This was like this week. Oh, shit. Yeah, I might hit him up. I might hit him up. I might hit him up. <laughs> <laughs> He, he follows my page. He follows yeah, oh, me. so perfect. He follows me too. So, so he'll see the DM. Up. God damn it. <laughs> okay, so how much do you think that's worth? I was thinking like I'd give him 500 for it. Really? I was going to say 100. Maybe 100. Don't don't don't. No, 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 not 500. <laughs> like 20 bucks. Oh, 20. Holy <laughs> yeah, shit. 20. No. No, he didn't put a price. Like it could be sold already. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I was just thinking that's probably what he was going to ask, but uh, my wife would never let you pay that. Fan of war on the independent scene. We know it's David. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like that's man, that's so crazy, man. Like that, that's so nostalgic in such like a crazy way. Like I remember like thinking he was just so cool, just because like, and he might be cool. I don't know, but like at the time, like he was all we had on on TV. He man, was. that was so. That was incredible. Because, like, like then, people would be like, oh, like, that's, he's from where you're from, right? I'm like, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, from ECW. Just incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I found one other thing relating to wrestling this week okay. that I thought it was just strange that this also popped up What's in up? my Twitter feed. But someone tweeted this, and I haven't fact-checked it, but I'm okay. just going to assume it's completely real. Rob Van Dam has been a champion of a Portuguese indie fed for 15 years. He's defended the belt once, not even in Portugal, but has never been officially stripped of the title. They gave someone the interim championship, so therefore RVD is technically a, a Portuguese indie wrestling champion currently. I didn't even know there was indie wrestling in Portugal. 15, wait, wait, 15 years? So Apparently he wrestled for this company like 15 years ago, and then wow. like never, you know, they, the indie feds, they always, you know, bring in the imports and give them sure. a championship, and then yeah. they come back and lose it, but well, that's he's brutal. never booked them. That's pretty I did, I, your reign to shame, man. <laughs> uh, I did get like a follow the other day from like a Portuguese uh, wrestling Instagram, and I did notice that they had indies there because like, they were posting about it, and I was like, "Holy! Like this is so wild!" Because I hadn't just thought about it. No, that would that be is pretty cool. fun. Go to go to Portugal. Uh, I, I assume it's like Lisbon, like the big city. Oh, like kind of, the, uh, it would have to be something. right. Where else would they? Yeah. Or maybe in the Algarve, because at least there's a lot of tourism there. Maybe sure. a lot of people would go sure. too, right? A lot of Brits. So, oh, oh yeah, there you go. You gotta buy the mask. Return as the Portuguese. Oh God! Man I mean, I'm going to Portugal next month. I, I, you gotta, I do it, it man! You gotta call out RVD and end that. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're all we're all rooting for you now, man. So, That's man, hilarious. That, I'm still thinking about the mask, man. Like, I, don't oh, get that. I mean, you could just get a yellow like. I know it was a right? bad mask, man. It wasn't a good one. It was a ghetto <laughs> mask. Old, so ghetto. Red. And all red Benfica, and there you go. Man. There you go. There you go. Oh man. Well, other than going to Portugal, Dave, I know you've been a busy man too. You're in the process of writing your second book. You're starting even finished. Your first book is red hot still. So what's going on here? What was the reasoning behind the second book if the first one's still this hot? I actually have a I have a really like solid uh story behind that, our method. So obviously the the first book came out about like eight months ago. It hasn't even been a full year yet. It's it's still moving a lot. It's doing really well. It's doing better than I thought. I passed my goal, my year goal. I hit in like five months, and I like was flabbergasted. That's awesome. I still don't understand. Like yesterday, I got a DM like, "Hey, how do I get your book in Australia?" And I'm just like, "Fuck!" I send like at least ten books to Australia every week. That boggles my mind, man. Like what? Like the book is everywhere at this point. The second book, the reason I decided to do it now is because my wife and I are having a baby in July, like we were talking about before we came on. Congrats. So my thought is, if I can write this book between now and like digitize it, the whole thing, get it a draft down by June, and then I spend three months, the first three months with the baby is just wild. Like you're just kind of locked down. I don't have to do anything, but the book's already written, and I release it in October or, or right before Christmas. Sure. 
uh, basically I'm getting an early start because I know my summer is going to be locked down. So it really is not going to come gotcha. out till the end of the year, but I'm kind of just pre getting ahead of myself for what's about to come. Cause those first three months are just chaos. Like I'll still be pumping out cooking videos, but there's no way I'd be able to work on a book. Um, so, you know, just getting it out of the way now. Uh, like, yeah, like I said, like the first book's doing really well, man. It's at this point, like a lot of stores are picking it up. A lot of Portuguese stores, which is cool. Yep. Um, it's getting the word out like way faster. I think, at first, it was like the the younger crowd was really into it, but now the older crowd's into it too, man. Like I have like older people that like me as much as the people that hate me. So it's like <laughs> I, I did this I did this little strategy during Christmas, and I and I ran it by Derek with the Portuguese kids, and he was like, "You're a genius, man." I sent a book to like all the Portuguese clubs around the U.S. and Canada, yep. and I just wrote a nice little note in there, like, "Thank you for like being in existence, and thank you for giving us a place to like be Portuguese and stuff." Yeah. And that made all of the older crowd like realize that I'm not a fucking asshole and like they like me now, you know, like, yeah, oh yeah. shit, this guy sent us a gift. Right. He actually cares, you know. <laughs> I donated to so many Portuguese clubs, Portuguese language schools. Nice. I sent so many donations in December. Like, I uh, these people that hate me, like at this point, have no reason left to hate me. They're just making things up, man. I, I've done so much good for the community that I've won oh, over this like new audience of, of just. It's not just my age group anymore. It's everybody. So that's yeah. really cool. Um, I was, uh, awesome. I said before, like, we, there's still gatekeepers, obviously in our world. And I had some stories about it. I'll share two with you guys. One, yeah, uh, there's a store in Massachusetts that sells my book. Okay. There's also a cooking page where this older woman who lives in that town in Massachusetts. It is not Maria Lawton. That lady's very nice. I like her very much. It's uh, another <laughs> Maria. Uh, yeah, Maria. And she apparently called the store and was mad that they were selling my book. Because what? I'm local. And said you should only be supporting locals, not these outsiders, you know. So that's 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 a gatekeeper if I ever see right. You know? So, and what's funny about that lady is that like in the coming weeks afterwards, I noticed she was like stealing my posts and like, <laughs> kind of making them her own, you know. If you guys saw, like, I posted a post about um, uh, Portugal like introducing oranges to Europe. The next yes. day she did. Yeah, yeah. Then I posted Whoa. one about the ukulele. The next day yeah. she did as well. And I noticed this kept happening for like a few weeks to the point I'm like, I got to block this account. Like, I, I, this is crazy. You know, right. like she's mooching off my success. And like, she doesn't have a big, as big of a following as I do, but on Facebook, she kind of does because that's a whole other world, man. Like, it is. older people Love you know, like, get behind, yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, like, like, I'm not about to have this lady make money off my, my stuff, you know? Um, there's also this thing I do where, like, I, I lately, like, I really, like, I'll go to these Portuguese restaurants and I'll film and I'll talk about how good they are, yeah. where you can find them. I don't charge those people for any of that. I pay for my food, whatever. This lady all of a sudden started oh, no. doing kind of the same thing. Like, all of a sudden, she cares about local businesses or whatnot. And I'm like, nobody cared about this stuff before I came along. She was just selling shirts on Etsy. Now, all of a sudden, she cares about Portugalia, <laughs> Massachusetts, or the one in New Jersey. She's posting about it. Oh, like, oh, my that's God. That's weird. Then there's another lady who oh started my God. a cooking page, and she lives up by where you guys live. I'm of not going to say the account name. And what of I noticed she that she did was she went through my, like, follows, like, yeah. who I follow, and she followed everybody, my personal friends, my wife, my wife's friends, my... my I know who I know who you're friends. talking about. You followed me, too. I know exactly okay. who you're talking about. Uh, people who live in Portugal that I'm related oh to. Oh, my God. It, 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 got, it got so detailed that it was so obvious. But that was okay, right? Like, I'm like, like all right, she's trying to build a following. She's following my people. Sure. What really made me mad is she didn't follow my account, right? So <laughs> you went through my... What the fuck? And followed everybody that shares uh, blood with me. And I worked with at some point in my life, but you, you couldn't even give me the follow. So I was just like, you know what, lady, like, I'm going to block you off the, off the bat. You know, like, I'm not too petty, but like in situations like that, I have to be. Oh, so no, there's still I, wa some... I want a blocker now. You got to let me know. Who this I'll is. let you know <laughs> off the thing. So like, there's, there's still people out there that like treat this as if it's like some sort of like weird competition or like if she would have just reached out to me the way I reached out to Steve, like, hey, I'm just getting started. What do you what kind of advice do you have? I would have told her exactly how I built my page and how I did it at first because I had a technique at first. Like I wasn't following random people's pages, but I had a technique of how I would engage with people. So I, you know, like I'm always willing to share that with people, but when they do shicey stuff like that, it just, it's just weird. So I, I mentioned weird. earlier, Maria law and I do like her. Right. So like I, I had a, a recipe I, I was making. And I didn't really know how to like do this specific step. So I just messaged her. I'm like, Hey, do you know how to make this? She called her aunt and like, called me back like the next day, shared her recipe with me. I oh, made a video awesome. out of it. That's how it's done, man. Like when we support each other, man, like I was able to create this video based on her 
advice to me and she didn't have to give it to me, but she did. Like, that's what I like to like, how I like to operate in this world and, and how we do it with each other. But exactly. if people are calling stores to ask them about to carry my book or following like my personal like people and like kind of doing it in a shysty behind the scenes way, just weird. When man. you go out of your way to be negative, you're not a very good person. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's crazy, man. So anyway, it's just, there's just some gatekeepers out there, but I feel like the group, the core group, like, that we have and like the Portuguese kids, Mike Rita, Taylor, yep. this yep. age group, this generation, we're just really nice people, man. And like, I, I hope it stays that way where the space of like creators or, and podcasters or whatever in our, in our weird niche, uh, just continues to just be like supportive because the Portuguese community was not like this and still nope. kind of is not. And for us to, to, to do this, like, I, like sometimes I'll film at a restaurant and I've gotten comments of like, Oh, you're just taking advantage of them to get free food. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm not saying this to be braggadocious, but do you know how many fucking books I've sold? I could probably rent the restaurant for the night and buy everybody's food. I will pay for every fucking meal that I have <laughs> just because I'm supporting these people, man. Like, exactly. I don't, I don't do this for free food. I'm not homeless. I'm living. I, there's people golfing right there. That's where I, live. <laughs> I don't have to do what I do. I fucking do it haters, for, man. For, now it's successful, but I do it because I really like doing it. So like, I will never ask people for free food. Do they give me free food? Sometimes, but I always try to pay for it first. But anyway, it's just like there's just this weird section of our community that's just naysayers. There's always going to be that, it but is. I feel like we have all found like each other and like other people in this space that are just like, I, I only work with people that are supportive and nice and, and cool and like positive people. Like if I, if I sense a, uh, a bit of just like, weirdness i'm just not gonna you're all it. yeah i'm the same way yeah, i'm the I'm exact right same now. yeah no okay well and speaking of supporting if you want to support the podcast please check out my sponsors go over to first row collectibles at firstrow.ca they got a ton of stuff from the wrestling world signed memorabilia any of the major sporting leagues old school wrestling games comic books you want it they got it they ship worldwide even better they update daily so please visit them at firstrow.ca and if you're into video games and books please visit bossfightbooks.com for great books on classic video games you'll find titles like goldeneye 007 shadow of the colossus nba jam and so many others everything you see on their websites available in paperback and ebook format so please check them out at bossfightbooks.com and if you want to support me directly you can visit my merchandise store at tpublic.com or scroll down on today's device it's embedded right there in the description click on that link it takes you right to the merchandise store i got everything from hoodies to travel mugs phone cases anything you need or want it is there but the easiest thing the best thing the freest thing to support the show is rate subscribe review on all major platforms most specifically apple Podcasts, tune in soundcloud spotify and iHeartRadio. radio all right gentlemen we've been sprinkling a little bit of you know wrestling knowledge throughout our introduction here even though our introduction went pretty much half of the show anyways but that's okay <laughs> i love talking shop with you guys but the, like i said the elimination chamber happened I didn't want to spend too much time on it anyways, because I don't know how you guys felt about it. I was sort of Did in... Did you guys watch it live? No. Well, you fuck know? you, Anybody? man. Get no, out of here. I, heard, I was listening to Bruce Pritchard's podcast. Just, I don't want to side rail this, but I guess he's been injured or something. But he's like, I'm going to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Then I'm going to wake up my wife and make her make me breakfast. What, like, the what the fuck? fuck? Like, if I woke up my wife to watch wrestling, she would kick my fucking ass. Bro. Like, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't wake up early either. I watched I watched uh, most of it last night, and I watched the main event right before this. Okay, that's cool. Because I don't really want, again, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time. Like, obviously, we'll touch on the two chambers. There was another two matches. There was the the, pre, the pre-show match. Uh, like I said, everything I just found mediocre, and you know the outcome. I literally felt I knew the outcome of every match. And I think I, if the show didn't happen, like, nothing would have changed. So. Exactly, exactly. And I want to pick your brain, obviously, Brady, because you follow fucking wrestling all the time, and you have your, your weekly podcasts. What was your reaction towards this pay-per-view? And do you think we need a pay-per-view in between the Rumble and Mania? No, we, we definitely don't, but, like, they're on a bit of a run right now. Like, since the Rumble, Rumble is when it, like, kicks off, like, playoff period of wrestling, right? Like, it's the, the WrestleMania like season, that. right? Yep. This this Chamber show was really hot last year with the whole Sami Zayn and Montreal thing. Good point. And this year, this was all big one commercial for Australia. This was <laughs> paid for by Australia. They didn't have enough to pay for The Rock, but, like, this was all one big <laughs> advertising, so... Yeah, it set up some of the matches that we kind of already figured out that were going to be happening at WrestleMania, but they they were able to make a fuck ton of money before WrestleMania from from Australia, who again paid them to do this event. So of course, uh, it's 
it's very like, yeah, did they need to do it? No. Do they, they always do it this time around, but yeah. I, I wasn't too big on the show myself. Uh, I don't like the chamber matches any, anymore. I'm so it's true. Anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Like uh, yeah. they're kind of they're kind of the same thing on, on repeat every it's year. Like when they but, did the Hell in the Cell pay per views, you just become desensitized. To I know. Yeah. yeah. They do it yeah. so often. It's like, uh, okay, where's the? You do it every year, so it's like, mm, and you, not the. Uh, it's not as exciting. I think it, it also like lost a lot of its allure. Like yesterday, I forgot what it was. I think Becky Lynch dropped like Tiffany Stratton like on the outside, and at first I, went, I turned to my wife and I was like, oh. And then I was like, wait, they added padding there. Like, yeah, there's you padding noticed that too, right? Yeah. Terrible. And I think they, they, did that, they did that probably a while ago like, that I just they didn't did. notice it. But like, what the hell, man? Like, not that I want them to get hurt or anything, but it just loses its like touch. It's true. You know, like, it's because the change. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I was just going to say, I think Tiffany Stratton's awesome. She's on her Dude, way. she's pretty oh, fucking yeah. No, this was her coming out party for sure. Yeah, yeah, if any positive out of this. It, it's like, boom. So when I moved to Orlando, I. Is, was when Mandy Rose was just starting, and I watched her from her very first match. I used to go to the house shows all the way through, and I remember thinking, like, damn, like, this girl is so freaking athletic, and, like, I wish people would be able to see this. And then when she left, I feel like it kind of left the void, and I feel like Tiffany Stratton is almost like her, but, like, times 10, dude. Like, yeah. she's oh, even yeah. better. And when I, when I say like her, I mean people expect her not to be good by the way she looks, but then she just blows you away, man. Like, yeah. she's not just a pretty face, man. She was out there, like, she, yeah, oh, she looked good. She really like like I I do uh, up next for post wrestling every week and I, I cover NXT extensively and I, I get to like see yeah. you know the, the upcoming crop and like since since like day one I'm like oh she could be a big star definitely Braun Breaker as well like of I know it's, it's WrestleMania time so everyone wants to focus on you know like what's the Rock gonna do is Cena gonna wrestle but they're they're doing a good job in like the first time in ever of actually building like. Yeah. other stars at the time yeah. like you, look you got cody you got i mean fuck punk but like you got you had yeah, punk, yeah, 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 yeah. you don't have punk anymore because he got injured uh aaron roger himself but <laughs> like there's 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 so many different like stars going on right now yeah. and they're they're attracting a lot of new fans so yeah i didn't really really care for the elimination chamber show but now that it's over we can just look ahead to wrestlemania yeah. which again is going to be absolutely stacked it's a great time to be a fan because yeah. If WWE is maybe not your thing, there's AEW. Sting's retiring next weekend, yep. so that's a huge True. favorite view. There's going to be some actual like bell to bell, incredible mat wrestling. If that's for what you're into, mm-hmm. or maybe you're into The Rock calling people fatties and you know that talking about whatever. Like, I, there's a lot going on. That you can pick and choose of, of everything. So. It is one of the best times to be a fan, right? You now. know, like wrestling is getting like really hot when those like people start texting you, like that don't watch, like, "Hey, yeah. did you see The Rock the other day?" Or, "Hey, right? who's yeah. this guy on the TV?" Yeah. And, like, you're like, it, you're starting to like notice like people are sniffing again, you know? Yep. Exactly. Um, it's it's crazy. I feel like it's like I wish I had more time because like obviously I have a, a child, so I have to devote time to a child. But there's so much wrestling on right now that I could just sit there all day, every day. And just if, if I had nothing to do, I could just indulge, man. Right? Like. Like, I, I, I wish this existed when I was, like, 12. You know, like... That's the thing, right? Because I would have never left the house, man. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And again, again, I don't want to touch on everything. Okay, let's do this. You gave your opinion there, Brayden. And that's fair, of course. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same boat as you. Exactly the same. But what about you, Ben? What was your favorite thing that came out of El- Elimination Chamber? Um, I'm happy Drew won. Because even though okay. it was expected, the work that guy's been putting in... Is, but, like keelan on punk like it's like oh his t-shirt's the best it's like we were just saying like they have so much talent now like the whole punk getting injured didn't even really face them when you which is crazy to think about because of the excitement of him coming back like there and drew's just been like i think like i wanted drew to win it was expected i think but yeah. i mean it could have gone orton too but um that was close they almost had me for a second the fact that drew won <laughs> like i'm hoping like he does get his moments i'm really hoping like he may. I, I'm thinking he's because Seth's still technically, I guess you could say, injured. Even though he's saying he's going to be good to go, I'm hoping Drew gets his moment in front of a live crowd. Number one, because he he was kind of robbed of that during COVID. But like, I'm almost thinking like Damian's going to catch cash in and ruin it. But yeah. like that that was probably my favorite thing that Drew won. Mm-hmm. And, and I know this is going to air after Raw, but like I think it's a huge huge missed opportunity if like on raw like seth comes out and before seth even says anything like drew just takes him out on the entrance ramp and just to really heal it up with the whole cm punk thing like sits down 
like CM Punk does. And then that's a good literally, one. Literally, yeah. like verbatim, does the Punk pipe prom, but like in his own words, just to kind of like, <laughs> just to add more, like you know, like uh, like you know, Seth Rollins as you lay there. As comfortable as you can be, I want you to listen to me. Like you know, like kind of like like say the punk promo, but like add his own thing, right? Yeah. Like I think that would be cool, but you know, if, rather they if they do it or not. But like Drew's my yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happy with what they're doing with Drew. I think he's great. No, he's doing fantastic. Like just everything like that he's doing, and now with this whole oh I'll, I'll pray for you, and it's like because he prayed for CM Punk <laughs> to get her. It's like I love like oh man again, this guy deserves his flowers, and yes, like as much as I want Priest to cash in too, I'd have opportunity and maybe i i don't want it at mania now because i want it more of a surprise because if you're expecting it is it really a good cash in like you know what i mean like the best one i still think was again speaking of rollins was his cash in at mania because no one was expecting that that's just it now damien does it to him (laughs) you know right but i think too many people already like you you thought of it like you know what i mean so i'm sure there's a lot of other people too so i i I don't know wrong with expecting it something and i guess like like i i i thought Okay, Drew's gonna win. Becky's gonna win. Like, the, yeah, it happened, um, but it was still kind of just like a mediocre. Like you said, like it, okay, like it wasn't like it wasn't a bad. It wasn't a bad show. It no. wasn't a great show. It was just it was just a, a show, right? Uh, I kind of miss different. like the NXT version of Drew McIntyre. Like when he used to just like have the hair in his face and sure. just like not really like react to things. He was just walk straight to the ring. Like I feel like he. I, I, I guess a lot of people like this too, maybe the kids, but like when he starts like joking around and like the whole three, two, one thing, I kind of like, I start disconnecting from it. I'm like, dude, of course. <laughs> I, I, I went to a SmackDown the other day and I was in awe about how big this man was. And I'm six, four. <laughs> He's so big. And I'm like, like, I don't want to see goofy drew, man. Like I want to see right. when he comes yes. out of WrestleMania, man, I, I want to see that drew he, man. Like he got rid of the sword. Such a oh, that's good. oh yes. God, sword, yeah. sword. Yeah. The sword was, was just cringe, man. Yeah. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. It's what, what, what other, like, like that's what I'm, they're doing a good job of creating like other characters. To me, I could not give a shit about drew. Like, three months ago, yeah. two months uh, ago, yeah. before yeah. this, right? Like, in, in all weirdness, like, butterfly effect here, domino effect is, like, him injuring Punk by accident is the best thing to ever happen to his career. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's by accident. accident. By accident. <laughs> right? Yeah, he was like, <laughs> fuck you, man. It was an accident, but they're rolling with it, and hopefully yeah. it's yeah. going to lead to a nice build-up when Punk gets back, assuming he doesn't get injured again, because he's very, unfortunately, like, I'm not... It's so cool that, like, you can just take, take away the whole rock Cody thing and right? there's still so much more going on. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So cool. See, like, like this is this is the bringing the rock in is attracting like all the either yeah. like lapsed fans from over the years and yeah. your casuals, like you say. But then you stick around and you're like, wait, who's who's this guy? Cody Rhodes and and like you, there's there's different characters that definitely yeah. like attract. Dave, what would you say is like some of the the stories going on right now that you're like into? Is it the rock? uh me no i mean i guess so well i'm always gonna be interested just because yeah like from my i just want to see the the what the outcome of all this is because now cody dropped that bomb that he wants to wrestle the rock well when are you gonna do that Uh, you know what i mean right what i like about that like the rock thing is like my wife will stop and look at the tv (laughs) like the press conference so now I get to talk about it with her. Like, hey, did you see that? Like, they should be like, do you think I was real? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I like to, I like, I really like real Ripley. Obviously, everybody does. But I, I, uh, I like the whole. I like watching Dom's like path. Like, I mean, I thought he was like a nerd when he first came out. Yeah, and I'm like, this is cool, man. Yeah. You know? So I, I, I don't know, like, I just like everything that's going on right now. Like, I don't, I watch wrestling a little bit different than most people do, too. I, I really don't dissect in the way, like, oh, I hate this, I like this. I like everything, man. I literally like all of it. I might like some of it less than other things, but, man, I'm such a fan that, I'd, like, I could just blindly watch all of it and be like, this was awesome. <laughs> I also watch it a little weirdly, too, and you guys are going to hear some weird things from me. Uh-oh. The guy in the front row with the Trinidad flag yes. was driving me crazy, bro, because he's at every show. He is like, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Can is. Can you give Australia their, like, spotlight? Did you have to get front and center with your flag? Like, this is their one pay-per-view they get. <laughs> like, you have to be fucking there with your flag, dude. I was, it was making me so mad. I'm just like, like, you might be a nice guy, man, but just give them their spotlight, you know? You need to do it with the Portuguese. I was going to say, I know, I know. we See, need a, rep- is, a representative have there. Have you guys noticed uh, Damien Priest's, like, legs? Like, they're starting to bend the wrong way. Have you noticed? He's got Kevin Nash legs. Yes, yes. And it drives me crazy, man. Like, I want to like him so much, but I just can't stop looking at his legs, man. I feel like like they're going to break. I think it's because because he used to be a, a bigger dude. Like even when he was in ROH, he was bigger, and now he's he slimmed down. I think that's the problem. Now I don't think his 
Links could carry the muscle that he has. So I, I watch wrestling really weird, man. I notice these. I just look at him. I, I watch these really weird things. You know what else I really liked yesterday? There was a What's spot up? where Tyler Bate had. Uh, that was a great match, by the way. He had somebody in a headlock, and he was kicking him in the head with his other foot. Yeah, love and that. I'm just spot. like, and then he grabbed his foot, and like he was using it. And I guess I just don't watch a lot of his matches. Like he probably does that all the time. But I was just yeah. like, man, like I'm glad somebody's doing something different and not just like turning a cutter into a new cutter like just something different like that was so different you know like nobody uses their feet like that man like i love watching new things like or just seeing people do like just different stuff to keep us entertained man. That was no because cool. that match was um, actually half decent and I, I didn't mind it at all and I, now i want to see a three-way eventually between bait dunn and balor can you imagine that three-way dunn, oof yeah that, he done definitely getting his name back is uh, yeah, has oh, helped man, him it's so cool man yeah you know what else i really like like current day randy Orton, like He's just so much huge. fun. Like he's huge, and like he's—you could tell he's having fun. Like, he is. I feel like back in the day, like he would almost look annoyed to be out there. <laughs> now he's just like always laughing yeah, and like or interacting with somebody in the crowd, which you didn't see him do too much. Like before, like he's just having fun. Like he, he probably knows, like you know, it's coming to an end or whatever. So he's having fun with it. That's true. And I think in turn, like it's making his matches so much more enjoyable. Like I'm having fun watching what? him. What did you guys think of uh, Rhea and, N- and Nia Jax getting the main event? Like, I understand Rhea's the homegrown. Uh, oh, yeah. No. I, did you guys I, know that Nia Jax was born she, in Australia? She's also yeah, born there, I, yeah. I know that. Like, in, in that regard, it's like, okay, I get it. They're giving them their moment in the main event. But, like, I don't I, – I, 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 even with You know what I wish? I, 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 I if they put in the main, main event, event, I wish Nia would have won and they would have just fucking <laughs> shot. Oh, they, that would have yeah, been good. Let, let Rhea get it back or something later. But, like – Man, Nia, what, a, what a crazy move that would have been, man. Like, yeah. Nia, Nia Jax is easily one of my least favorite wrestlers, like, possibly of all time. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta maybe, say, that, maybe that's that just, okay. like, Nia Jax is in the main event of this pay-per-view. Like, I just, like regardless if Rhea's, like, you know, I just I just that felt so out of place to me. It was, yeah, it, was, it was weird. It was okay, but it was really just to get the crowd out. They were so loud, right? That's yeah, I, I get it from that point of view, yeah. but, like, as a viewer watching at home, it's like, Really? Like Drew yeah. just won the. But, <laughs> but I now, know. like like WrestleMania, like Becky Lynch winning that chamber, it's 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 Becky versus Rhea at WrestleMania. That's a, That's a pretty match. big match. Oh, That's yeah. like your two your two top women. Have they, have they faced each other yet? Ever? I don't think so. So. Yeah, like, and and both are in like the like final stages of their evolution, right? Like yes. both have like gone through so much to become like. I'm a really big Becky fan, and have become a pretty big Rhea fan yeah, as well. So I'm definitely looking forward to that but you mentioned the cody thing like having the rock it's clearly the rock and roman versus cody and seth night one it has to be out. right Which, yeah i think is but, a, i think is a mistake too like you're real what if what, one like what if they get injured man how do you do how do you do roman and cody night two well like, they'll have a backup for well, sure yeah roman won't wrestle much anyway so I, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't really do much. i mean still, you, you're still running that risk like even when yeah, they did it with true. daniel bryan at wrestlemania 30 he yeah. had to have his match with Triple H first. And even then, watching that, I'm like, oh, man, like, what if this guy gets hurt? Like, that's gonna... But isn't that the fun, though, uh, to see what they come up with say, after? I'm, like, so selfish that, like, when you said that, I started smiling. Because I'm like, shit, that's going to But then I'm like, shit, they could be hurt, too, right? Like, <laughs> but, man, yeah. like, I, I, guess, I guess, like, I mean, I keep hearing people talk about that, that possibility, but I didn't really think it was, like, going to come to fruition. But now that you mentioned it, like, it is probably headed that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, okay, so, so, um tag team match closes night one rock and roman somehow either seth gets pinned because that's why he's in the match or seth pins the rock which could be also interesting but either way the rock then costs roman the match the next night therefore the raw after they set up roman rock for next year's wrestlemania which yeah. should, should be in vegas but they didn't announce it properly but <laughs> like that's they basically like they've set that up now for the next year like cody finishes the story finally from what he should have done last year and this way it's the rock interfering to help him do it instead like he stops that fucking solo sokoa with his big old thumb <laughs> and, gets in there and does his own thing like any time cody cody must have ptsd for anyone walking around in a hoodie oh like, god that guy is that guy's cost well, a lot of people matches with so you're, you're in the stuff. camp of thinking that the rock's pretty much like pretending to be healed just to kind of Get one up. Over. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say like he's pretending, but like something happens at night one of Mania, whether he loses or or whatever. See, which I, then like yeah, or, well yeah, because they have big, to tell that story. I'm a big Star Wars fan too, so like I, especially after the Vegas press conference, I was looking at it like and, and I was looking at it like okay, like Rock, <laughs> Rock's Palpatine, 
uh, um, <laughs> Roman Reigns is Vader, and you got Cody as like Luke Skywalker, right? So like eventually, Super. Roman's gonna like they're they're gonna pivot Roman into like the giant face that they've always wanted him to be, and now he's got to take the like the the heel the evil Rock, right? For 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 that, I think it'll be the other way though. I think uh, yeah. it'll be yeah, Rock b- becoming babyface again because uh, like look, the Rock coming back. I think we're all smart enough fans to be like, oh, the Rock's back. Cool. But yeah. then as soon as, yeah. as soon as he started being like a dick, like Hollywood Rock, yeah. we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is yeah. all great. Right? We're all do Hollywood like this. Rock. Where's, the, where's yeah. the Hollywood Rock theme song? Oh, oh that theme right. is so It has to come yeah, back. Yeah. has to come back. Yeah, it should come back. But yeah, like this is a crazy time because now I'm like, whoa, I actually do care about the Rock. He actually made me laugh. Like he wasn't just going, you know, paint by numbers, cookie cutter. He was calling people like inbreds and telling he's going to sell good. Off when there, he like, said trailer park trash, I was yeah. like, yo, he's back, man. Yeah, like, like, Whoa. Cause that could be like cancelable at this, at this right? 2024. <laughs> because we're older now too. When he's a face, just saying the same cheesy stuff. He's been, yeah. it's like, okay, whatever. But like it, heel rock saying like some like, Oh wow. Like offensive stuff. is like, okay. Yeah. This brings yeah. back way this, more. This brings back the rock. That we all love, right? That's funny. And that shirt alone that he brought back, come on, kudos to him, yeah. right? Oh, the, the Versace? Yeah, yes. I'm looking yeah. at knockoffs. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my mania fit ready for, because uh, if I, I've never watched him wrestle, right? I've been to WrestleMania, I've been to some crazy wrestling. You've shows. never You've watched, watched him wrestle oh, live? Oh. World Order. <laughs> You need one of those. There you go. <laughs> oh, you never watched. I got to watch him live once. And again, this is, I, I, I was at uh, Mania 18 when it was here. So I got to watch. Rock Hogan. Yeah, yeah, Rock Hogan. Was there, so that was, dude, that was saw, the one time. I saw The Rock live so many times when I was in my teens, man. Like when I was in my, my heyday, I would go to so many shows, man. Like my sister like had just gotten like her first job. So she had a little bit of money, you know, like I, I, like first, like she was like 17, like that kind of job. But we didn't, we, had, we didn't have any bills at the time. So like she was just like, like I guess supply me with like like tickets to these things I, I need to go to that parents would never buy but man I saw The Rock so many times man or, or even Steve Austin and stuff like wow. I have like I have like some like old just print you know the pictures you get developed and like I look at them and I'm just like holy shit like this is like my parents looking at Andre and Hogan in a picture like from right? there like <laughs> like I have these pictures like what that's the hell, hilarious you know? but uh I, I I'm excited to see him back I'm, I'm excited to see him remembering level of detail like that with the shirt and stuff like like i i love when they like just insert little details that like are an ode back to like the true well one game. detail like, oh, i have to pick on is his guns up instead of his one up I know, so I know. i'm it's sorry like everybody's like, talking about it everybody's talking about it it's Do like you guys think it was intentional I don't know no, at this point. Just, I think he met up, but him. now everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna turn on Con Roman." That's the, that's the signal. That's the signal. I, when, I, when I, I saw him do it, it, when I saw him do it, I was kind of thinking like, maybe this is not planned, but maybe he's doing it as like a backup in case they do need to swerve or whatever. Not true. But like, or maybe he's just so jacked that like, shit, like he's you can't put his thumb down. That's hilarious. I'm so curious to see how it plays out. You know, like, man. Yeah, like that we've got we've got Rock, and he's potentially wrestling this year and next year. He joined the TKO board, so he's signed on with WWE for years. Yep. So, like, I imagine they next year is his, like last match. Like him versus yeah. Roman is probably his last ever Could actually be. wrestling match. So enjoy the next year or so with having the Rock because it'll be very exciting. But like I said, there's there is other stories like the Cody story. Cody is the most like over wrestler right now and like nope. so many people are i will contest that because i we will end on this for our wrestling talk our truth is on fucking fire <laughs> gotta give I love to our truth our no, truth is like is like i don't even know the word bulletproof man like, <laughs> nobody can hate that man or like he can never say anything that will cancel him that man is just like gold man i actually heard a podcast with him the other day i don't know if you guys knew this but like he had a really bad infection in his leg that's why yeah. he was out yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, to the point that they were gonna Probably yeah. you know, thinking about taking it. Yeah, away. I know, right? Like, I'm so happy he's back, man. And that didn't happen. But like, that man is such gold. Uh, even my wife was laughing again. Like, she hates wrestling, but the detail that he flew to Austria yesterday, <laughs> and that they actually made content around it. Like, instead yeah. of just like, like they spend time with these details now, and like that was just so good, man. It's so obvious, but so good. Yeah, I love him, man. Sometimes it's like, I- I'll be honest, like yeah, it's still great, but sometimes it's like, oh man, like okay. I get it. Our truth, our truth's like the, the funny one, but it's like I don't know. But like, there's always they, I always respect for me, but most of the times it's like okay, yeah, that's funny. Like when he came out at the Royal Rumble, like in the girls' match, I was like, eh. 
But when I realized that he actually came out with the right number, like he was the same number for his match, I'm like, yeah. that level of detail yeah, made it that's so good. much better for me. I'm like, they actually paid attention and didn't just throw Well, not only that, them. even his comment when he was walking away and it was like all the bigger yeah. girls in the ring, it was like, are you sure they're not men? It's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so good. And ageless, man. That, he still looks like he's like... Is he in his mid-50s now? 55 or something? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. That was so good, good man. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say he was K Quick, man. He's been, yeah. oh, he's been around. See, if anyone needs a, a short title run, put like why not have him win the strap by mistake and then the next week just lose it? Like you yeah. know, what I mean? why not? Come on, I would, I would go for him, man. He won the he's he's former NWA World Champ in TNA. Yeah, yeah. that's champion. right, that's right. Yeah, he yeah. No, not, now that I think about it, and they're not gonna go this route, but our truth versus Logan Paul for the U.S. title that would be something. <laughs> It would You're be not funny. Matches. They're not going. Imagine, that one, yeah, we, we know that, but that Randy. would. Now that I'm thinking yeah, about that, it'll that be Randy now. This is yeah. a really random side note, but I just, I just thought of. You know how I met last night? Uh, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross. Oh, nice. Ryan Cabrera. Yeah, yeah. I went to like what? like town had like a little music festival. Yeah, yeah. And I turn around and they're like, she was feeding her little baby. They just had a baby or whatever. And I met them last year at the same event. I, I was like, I, I never asked them for pictures and stuff, but uh, I had to like, you know, I had to go tell her I was a fan. You know? so I was just like, I told her, and I was like, "Congrats on the baby! I met you last year. Like, I don't bother you, whatever." I don't know what just made me think of that, but I had a wrestling moment. Oh, yesterday. thanks for sharing. Sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Will she be back? We'll see her one day. My, my, my wife was like, "I didn't even realize she was gone." I'm like, "Man, she's been gone for a while." But uh, she looked, um, she looked like back to normal. Like she doesn't look like she just had a baby or anything. Like yeah. respectfully. Speaking. Well, I'm sure she should be pop. Uh, you know why? It'd probably be after Mania when all the storylines reset. They'll probably I did introduce see her. That, right? uh, Ryan Cabrera is going on a Pop 2K tour starting in March. Oh. It's like him and a bunch of other like you know. See? Uh, old school 90s. pop stars or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's getting back on the road, so she can't be too far behind. <laughs> yeah. Go. No, it's what so do you true. guys think of? What do you guys think of? of uh, is, is it Jake Paul, Logan Paul, or Jake Paul? Which one is it? The Paul Logan, guy. Logan, Logan Paul one in WWE. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's he's incredible in the ring. Like he's 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 proving proving himself. But do you guys think this is going to be long term? Or I think he's, I don't think it was meant said. to be. But but he seemed sure. to like he seemed to catch on pretty quickly right like he, and he likes to it too get it very yeah. quickly like he I understands it yeah. i don't i don't like logan paul i've never liked logan paul but like i i can't not respect how quickly he's adapted to it and yeah. it seems like he's been doing it forever like i'll give him that i just i don't yeah I don't like him i don't like the stuff he does outside of the ring like like japanese forest crypto zoo yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. i there's know all yeah. there's all I these know. things it's just like really dude like i can't I can't like the person. I'm the same way. I gotta respect. I gotta respect the, he, gotta respect the in-ring talent. So. He's uh, he's he's fun to hate. Like he's, yeah, he's yeah. been uh, he's way better as this heel, right? Like in wrestling, it's weird. Like as soon as someone becomes heel, then then we start liking them a lot more because like then their character can be like you know stressed out. But this yep. guy is genuinely like easy easy to to boo. So they yeah. found something in that. I always respect when they like. I mean, I know he's obviously naturally gifted, but like when they actually put like effort into. It's not just like I'm gonna go out there and do whatever. I, I heard somebody I forgot who talking about Pat McAfee the other day. Like when he first got involved in WWE or whatever, Rainy, like yeah. he got he bought one of their rings, got it sent to his place. Mm-hmm. He hired one of their refs or a former ref to come out and actually like put the ropes on the way they should be put on, the exact tension that they would put oh, it on, nice. so that he was training appropriately. That level of detail, and then he hired Rip Rogers to train him. Or whatever. Oh shit! Like, Crazy. Like, See? He could have just showed up too, right? Like, yep. like, the, like the people used to do maybe ten years ago, or whatever. But when they actually, like me, like Lawrence training, Taylor, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When like, they actually put this training. effort in, man, that's like legit, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. and that's I another thing. Like, I respect it. I respect. I, re- I respect that he put in the work. Three hours of McAfee on Raw though is not. Is not <laughs> two hours on SmackDown, it was, it was man. Like, I don't know. He's got. He's getting to that point. It's like, oh man, like I like the guy. I, I, I do, but it's like, oh, he finds like, out too much. I think that's the problem. He, yeah, he's starting to get to that, like, oh, man. Like, shit, like, the only thing I don't like about the commentary team, and maybe it's just me, is that they keep switching it up. Like, I just want them to make up their damn mind for a while. Yeah, like, yeah, you, get used you, get to, one, you get used to one thing. And like, yeah. like, our whole childhood was basically, like, two sets of, of two yeah. or two sets of three. Yeah. Like, and, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's just, like a, just constantly recycling. And I'm like, who the hell is on today, man? Like, I don't even know. What about Corey Graves as, like, the lead on SmackDown? Do you guys like that? No, because he's the natural, like, Again, heel. Yeah. heel, yeah. I want to hear him heal it up, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, see, I watch NXT every week, and Booker T, Shucky Ducky Quack Quack. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Holy crazy. crazy. <laughs> we, got him, 
we got him live on TV one day getting caught red-handed ordering his TGI. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We got him just blatantly being like, yo, this this chick's hot. Or like, this this girl's going to be something because she's oh, hot. Man. Like, he is just like, there, there's something I say on my show every week. He's like, oh, Booker T's on one tonight. That's just every night <laughs> on NXT. He's going off on like. Oh, man. I, I got one here and I feel like he kind of got lost through all this. Uh, what did they do with Gunther at uh, WrestleMania? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. we'll end on that. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was, it was but, but now what? What do they do now? I still think um I still think they should go back to Seamus personally. Because that's yeah. another guy, in my opinion, who has a story to finish, right? He wants that yeah. icy title. He wants to be a Grand Slam that's the one thing, one title he's not hasn't won. I think that's a they'll have a we already know they'll have a good match. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a banger. Match. They could always go back to Chad Gable too, I think. Gable. Yeah, those are the two. Yeah, I they need a good job. Well, who else yeah, would it be, think, right? I think, uh, yeah. well, they might go Ron Breaker. Breaker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but again, it's too cold. Well, that's the problem now. There's no story. Sure, it's no, too cold. So, you know, like, yeah. Really yeah, with Bron, Bron Breaker, like, I feel like I, I watched his match the other day, and, like, I hope they don't turn him into Goldberg, bro. Like, I feel like they're, they like, might. They might, yeah. I, I know, man. I'm just like, I don't want to see him be another Goldberg. I want to see him be Braun Breaker, man. Like, he's got so much talent. He's good. I'll, I'll tell you, like, it's, I, I, again, I've watched since his, his, and I've watched him every week on NXT since being there. And, like, he, he started off just like, hey, you got here because you're big, you're jacked, you're a meathead, and your dad's a Steiner. But I'd say <laughs> over the last two years, like, he has become, and, like, dare I say it, like, don't hold me to this, he reminds me of Kurt Angle. Because, mm. because... He, he came so. in here and he was like, wow, I, I can throw guys around. Look at me. And he was like belly to belly. He, he learned how to do the wrestling really quickly. But over the last year, he's like picked up on like yeah, no, yeah, comedy yeah. timing. No one yeah. can be as funny as Kurt Angle and then go out there and like wreck True. someone. Yeah. That's and a good point. This guy. So he reminds me of that. And yeah. like right away, like right now he's a tag champ. But I imagine um, he drops that at Stand and Deliver and then he's yeah. just like, He's gone to main roster, and I, I I really think he'll be a huge deal there. And I don't want him to do the Goldberg streak and all that. Just I just I, I guess it kind of like he he ended the match with the, with the spear, and like when he got up, he had like this he kind of has the same tattoo as Goldberg on the shoulder. Right. And I was just like, dude, give him a different finisher, please. Like just something <laughs> else, man. Because like he's got a few, but yeah, he has a few. Yeah, yeah. He's got the best spear right but now. But the spear was wicked. Yeah, I yeah. heard them say that like, they clocked him running the ropes at 23 miles an hour yeah, right? time or something. I yeah. can't even ride my bike that fast, dude. Like, <laughs> that is wild. That I is crazy. Crazy. Something else. He's, he's someone to watch for sure. He's he's yeah. very talented. And I hope he – I would like to see Gunther versus Braun, but I don't no, know if cool. this year. No. Yeah, I think it'd be too Let soon. Build a like, bit. I'm fine with Sheamus or Chad. Like, I, 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 a lot of people make Chad Gable and Kurt Angle comparisons, and I get that. Like, yeah. Angle's – Angle's my all-time fave, like because because that guy just came in and did it all the comedy. I'm but, so happy uh, Chad Gable's getting like like yeah. when he, he was with Jason Jordan. Like I yeah. feel like they were just like spotlight like Jason Jordan more. Yeah, American Alpha. And I always felt like Gable was the better of the two, not only in the ring but just like funny man. And everything so I've always liked him from he the beginning. Finally got like yeah. his like chance to like just be his own thing or whatever. He's so funny, man. No, that's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming aboard today, my friends. This has been awesome. Always good to catch up. We got to make this a regular thing now. Now that we're known yeah. as the Flying Pork Chops, let's make it <laughs> a regular session here every once in a while. But promote your shit where people can find you. Anything, your socials, whatever. Ben, you can start off, my friend. Uh, comedy Portuguese. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and not so much on. I got all the other socials too, but I don't really focus. I don't have to. <laughs> I just stick to mainly Instagram and Facebook. But yeah, you can find me there on Comedy Portuguese. And uh, yeah, Braden. Uh, excellent. Yeah, I mean, you can check out uh, me on Instagram, Twitter at the Brady or at Poison Rana Pod. Uh, poisonrana.ca for all the links of everything. I do a lot of wrestling podcasts, movie reviews. I got a Patreon and uh, we do live events. Like I said, if you're in the Toronto area, definitely give us a follow because we host a lot of things. We're going to do a dynamite after party with wrestling karaoke. And then we're doing something for money in the bank. If you're going to mania, hit me up. I'll be doing a whole bunch of shows, going to a bunch of indie stuff as well. But yeah, uh, check out Poisonrana in your podcast app. Appreciate it. The pork chops. And then, Dave? Uh, for me, uh, my book is out. If you guys want a, a Portuguese cookbook, yes. it's really easy to follow. It's how to cook Portuguese stuff.com slash book. Uh, I have some like live appearances coming up that I just started kind of doing for the, like, it's kind of a new thing. So I'll be in Fall River, Massachusetts this 
Thursday, February 29th. I'm flying up next week. Uh, we're doing a book signing up there at Portugalia Marketplace. It's like this big Portuguese, like modern supermarket. Uh, we're expecting a couple hundred people, man. It's going nice. to be freaking bananas because like this is the Portuguese like headquarters in the States, like this, this little Portugal. It's going to be yep. wild. Uh, we're doing one in New Jersey, which is where I'm from, uh, April 27th. And then I'm coming up to Canada for right. Mississauga on May 25th. Uh, I can't say where it's at. They're not allowing me to say it yet, but uh, it may or may not be at a Portuguese club in Mississauga. Uh, there may or may not already be some sort of festival happening that weekend. <laughs> and I may or may not be a part of that festival. Uh, those guys are freaking awesome, though. They're flying me up. They're taking care of everything, man. Like, wow. amazing, man. Like, like top class. When you deal with Portuguese clubs, you don't always get that because these yeah. are like just Portuguese clubs. These are just like men running like a bar. These guys, like, they have a travel agent. They had a whole budget. They had everything going. Like, professional as professional can get, man. So, I just don't, at this point, know how many books to send to Canada for that event because I don't know how many people are going to show up. I have no idea how to even, like, True, put right? this together. So, more to come on that. But if you live in Canada, which probably a lot of you guys do have listened to this, um, May 25th, Mississauga, I'll be there hanging out all day. Um, so, yeah. Can I get a book? Can I get a book signed yeah, from course, my aunt? Man. My aunt, oh, my aunt who, uh, my aunt who says you swear too much. I got. Oh hear man, that. yeah, I'll, I will. So actually, there, I, I've had a few people ask me for books for like Love their it. grandma, or whatever, and I'll take like little post-it notes and I'll cover up all the swear words in the book. There's only like three or four. But oh, I'll I want you to sign like, it with swear words. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, the book, the, the events, awesome. and if you have Instagram, my my handle is at How to Cook Stuff. I make Portuguese food, and I try to make it as easy as possible. Uh, and that's about it. I'm really happy we got to do this again, man. Like uh, this is, yeah, this is I love talking about wrestling with, with people, and <laughs> I don't get to do it often. So you know, and we built some friendships. Just like I, I met Braden doing this, and I still yeah, man, DM him you. once in a while. You know, thank you, Steve. Um, and Steve. I try. Steve, yeah. thank you. Thank you, yeah. I try, I try. And I might or might not be in Mississauga helping out Dave, too. We'll see. That's right, yes, yes. <laughs> I have so, a hand. Yeah, I, so you I can find me there, there too. With, I might or might not be there with my dad at the bookstore. <laughs> Your dad comments on my stuff all the time, man. Like, I know. He, I, was, you know what? I was not. I was, I was there the other day, and he was like, oh, look, I... He was showing me like, oh, and I'm like, Dad, you're you're not commenting on his page. You're you're DMing him. Leave the guy That's alone. Okay. Oh my <laughs> god! You know what I love he about your dad? He doesn't get is that it, right? You oh, guys, are, so his uh, Ben and, and his dad are Porto fans, and I'm a Benfica fan. Yeah. And ah. even when I post Benfica things, your dad still leaves nice comments. Oh, and like, normally people don't do that. Like they'll stick oh, to their man. guns. But your oh, dad's my. really nice, man. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. We got a Port, Benfica, and a Sporting. So that's that's uh, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And for myself. Yeah, I know, right? The white guy. He's, he's Toronto FC. That's who he goes for. Toronto <laughs> FC. Oh. And for myself, oh, okay. Okay. you can find me on, on the socials, mostly Instagram and X under Finger Styles, or you can follow the podcast on X, the podcast app. Email us your thoughts, suggestions, comments, anything you want to get off your chest at the podcast app at gmail.com. Please check out those fine sponsors because if it helps them, it almost definitely helps me out. Most importantly, please rate, subscribe, review on all the major platforms. Okay. One last question before I let all you guys go. Give me one person i know we don't have representation of portugal really in wrestling so let's do this who is your favorite european wrestler Ooh, will osprey good call Man, this guy good is, shout this out this guy is just uh i mean he's from the uk he's from england he's just like a superstar and if anyone who's like wwe focused definitely check him out he's just starting up with AEW. but any of his work from new japan and the indies over there in the uk like he is the the guy it was gunther and then he signed with WWE, WWE yeah. basically like stripped away a lot of Europe's yeah. wrestling scene, and I'd say he was the last known survivor up until now. So uh, definitely would say it was Big Willie. There you go. Uh, I can't argue that. Yeah, he's. I saw. I was at Forbidden Door that match with um, incredible with Omega. Man, just like that was best a great match, match I've ever been to. Wow. It's, well, going back to WrestleMania 18, I, I told uh, Steve this, but that was my first live event ever, ever. So I'm like, how is That's this cool. ever going to get popped? And then right? Forbidden, Door, Forbidden Door 2, man, that, that oh, man, like ev ev the crowd was into everything, man. And then even Daniel Bryan coming out to Final Countdown. Live. Right. I, I, my Good voice shit. was done, dude. Just done. <laughs> what, what a show. But going back to Osprey, yeah, that match was yeah. That, that that opened my eyes like wow this guy is the real deal and I'm a big Omega fan too right so yeah he's my favorite there you go Dave what about yours 
I'm going to stick to my guns. Killer Kelly, man. <laughs> yes. The queen. There I we go. Here's the show. I'm going to tell you. Listen. You got to get her on. Right. Yeah. Killer Chop. Kelly. I'll Killer Kelly. Because I truly believe that real life or not, she could probably kick all our asses. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, so in case I not. ever meet you, uh, I'm not, I almost said her real name. In case I ever meet you, <laughs> Kelly, don't beat me up. You're my favorite European wrestler of all time. There and you go. And Unless she... Aldo Montoya sells me that mask oh, for 10 bucks. Uh, <laughs> like, $500. Like, it might smell weird. I don't know. And cheap plug on my note. I'll say my favorite European wrestlers are the European wrestlers I've had on the podcast from Doug Williams to Big Demo to Axel Tischer, Michelle Green, and Nick Aldis. Those are my favorite European wrestlers. Beauty. Top class, top class beauty. <laughs> exactly. So, on that note, he's Ben. He's Braden. He's Dave. I'm Steve. We are the FPCs. This is the podcast. Peace.